Hey friends, welcome to another Garden City Arts online program. Today is Kids Art Tuesday and my name is Katie Guthrie. I'm going to be walking you through a really fun project and we're going to learn how to draw some of your favorite sweet treats. We're taking inspiration from artist Wayne Tebow today. So here's a one very simple example of his work. Let me flip through some more. He was a pop artist and as you can see, he had a sweet tooth. He spent a lot of time in the bakery during the first half of his career. So our project is going to look something like this today. I'm gonna to walk you through quite a few different sweet treats and you can choose which one to draw or you can draw all of them. So supplies that you will need to do this project today. You will need paper. I draw on black paper because Wayne Tebow had some really fun colors and so I like to um, use the black paper to really pop those. If you're using black paper you have to have oil pastels. Okay, or chalk pastels. Those are the only two colors that will really show up on black paper. I would also suggest having a white piece of chalk or a pencil. Okay, um, if you don't have oil pastels or black paper, no stress. You can just use plain old white paper and you can use crayons. You could use colored pencils. If you have watercolor paper, you could paint a Wayne Tebow cake. Okay, so really it's whatever works. Um, whatever materials you have on hand is just fine. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, before we can start drawing like Wayne Tebow, we need to talk about shapes and forms. Shapes are 2D, so they are flat. Think ovals, think triangles, think rectangles, squares, and all those other shapes that you learn about in school. Forms are 3D, or at least they appear to be 3D when you are using them in art. So an oval becomes a cylinder by adding a few additional lines, and then that makes it look 3D. Triangles become triangular prisms by adding maybe some other shape, like a rectangle to the bottom of it, okay? Um, think about like cubes. Oh, cubes are fun. Cubes are 3D squares, okay? So there are lots of different forms out there and Wayne Tebow used a lot of them in his artwork. We are going to make our own sweet treats starting right now. I've decided that I'm going to make a piece of pie. So if I'm using, if you are like me using black paper, you're going to want a piece of chalk. The very first thing we want to do is make a triangle. Now the triangle isn't going to be one that you think of like you see like the food pyramid. It's not going to be one of those perfect triangles. It's going to be a little bit shorter and a little bit thinner. So I'm going to make a diagonal line. That's going to be the crust of my pie. Then I'm going to make a nice straight line that's um, parallel to the bottom of your page, bottom and top. Okay, this is a horizontal line that runs left to right. And then I'm going to make another diagonal line connecting the two points. And that's going to be the top edge of my pie. Now, right now, it's just a shape, right? To make it into a form, I'm going to add a rectangle down below underneath. And what I do is I add two parallel lines coming down. And then I want to make sure that this line right here is parallel to that line right there. Do you see? So it makes a nice rectangle. Now, if you want, you can add a scalloped line. Scalloped lines are basically a bunch of hills thrown together. And then bring it down a little bit and underneath your pie, and that will make the crust. Okay? So that's a really simple pie, fun and easy. You could also make, I'm going to just draw all sorts of things on here. You could also make, ooh, what about like a cupcake? We could make a cupcake. So I'm going to start off with a tiny cylinder, maybe not that tiny. So to start with a cylinder, you have to start with, to get a cylinder, you have to start with an oval. Then I bring my sides down 
and make it round. Now, cupcakes kind of come out a little bit. So I'm actually making what kind of looks like a trapezoid with a circle on top, okay? Now, remember, don't stress too much. If you're using pencil, you can erase. I can't erase because chalk doesn't erase well from paper, but I can cover it up with my oil pastels. So if you're using oil pastels, no worries. Next, I'm going to make a whole bunch of what look kind of like um, hot dogs, okay? I'm gonna use curved lines on either end and make it round. I could make those curved lines come over the wrapper, the wrapper or the cylinder a little bit if you want lots and lots of frosting on your cupcake. I'm gonna make a smaller hot dog and then another small hot dog. Going to round it out and then I might put a cherry on top. Okay, so I know it is maybe a little bit harder to understand with all my lines, but remember you can erase those lines that you don't need and you'll have a nice little cupcake. Cupcake wrapper, voila. Okay, um, if I want to make a cake, oh, there's not very much room for a cake, is there? Um, I'm gonna make a really tiny cake up here. I'm gonna start again with an oval. I'm gonna keep my sides nice and straight this time and end with a curved line. Okay, now I could always put plates underneath all of these and the way you would do that is just to make little ovals. Well, ovals that are bigger than your sweet treat. And the oval goes behind and disappears behind the cake, pie, or cupcake. Now, I have some nice basic outlines. Okay, outlines are the uh, contour lines or outlines are basically the borders of your object that you are creating. Now I can have fun and add color. Now this part is fun, but I want you to make sure that you're not just coloring things in solid, okay? You wanna think about the shape and maybe the direction you want your lines to go in. So I'm gonna make a pumpkin pie because that's one of my favorite pies. So I'm going to do orange on top. Now, these lines on top, I'm going to go side to side, horizontal lines, okay? And I'm going to color it in. Then down here, I can go vertical and do vertical lines. And by coloring it in a little bit differently, you are going to help make the different parts of your pie or cupcake stand out from each other. That is important. Also remember, you can mix your colors. So I'm gonna make the side of my pie a little bit more brown orange. So I'm mixing brown into my colors. Oil pastels are really easy to mix and they're really wonderful for that reason. Now I can cover up all of my white chalk lines so that they disappear. You'll notice that the white makes it a little bit brighter that's okay. I can always dull it back down by adding brown and covering it up or keep it light because I want it that way. I can add white to the top of my pie to make it lighter or pro trick, I can use yellow. Yellow makes orange lighter. Yellow makes just about any color lighter because it is a very, very light color kind of the wuss of the color wheel or the lightest color of the color wheel. Okay, so I have very basic pie. I'm gonna continue coloring, but you kind of get the gist, right? So we are thinking about the different forms. If I want these scallops to stand out, then I'm gonna make kind of curvy lines as I color this in. And go ahead and get your crust and your pie done and all that good stuff. And then we'll move on to talking about the cupcake. So I'm gonna speed up just a little bit right here. Okay. So I have gotten uh, my piece of pie done. Um, I'm going to quickly color in the other two and just kind of talk you through 
a little bit about how to do that. So um, let's go ahead and get started on the cupcake. So again, remember to start dark to light. I don't know if you caught that, but that's kind of what I was doing on a lot of them. So I'm putting in just a little bit of dark brown for my wrapper. Then I can go in with my yellow. If I want like a tan wrapper, then I could do that. You can color your wrapper any color you want. I would still use some dark colors and some light colors to accent your wrapper. Um, you could even throw in a little bit of details like polka dots onto your wrapper if you want. Make sure you have some of those polka dots going off your cupcake so they'd be like semicircles, right? And you can also go back in and add lots of good details. I use my black as kind of my finisher to create just a few little basic outlines that help give some detail to your cupcake, pie, whatever you're drawing. Um, let's see, I'm gonna have a vanilla cupcake with a red cherry on top. So again, I'm starting with some darker colors. Uh, white is not just white. You're gonna see some yellows in there. You're gonna see some grays. You might even see a little bit of blues if you're looking at kind of the shadowed area. So. Wayne Tebow didn't just paint white for frosting. He added a lot of really great colors that made him a pop artist, um, or made him a good pop artist, I should say. So he was a pop artist and he created some really, really fun pieces of art using very vibrant colors. Might not be really obvious when you first look at them, but if you look at them up close, you'll see layers of gorgeous colors. So I laid down some of, I'm kind of copying Wayne Tebow, which is the theme of the day. I laid down some yellows for where the warm colors are hitting and some blues for where there's some shadows, okay? So the yellow is the warm part where there's lots of light and the blues are the shadowy parts where the light maybe isn't touching as much, maybe underneath those pieces of, those chunks of frosting. Okay, and of course the yellow can be on top of the frosting where the light is hitting. Okay, so there's my frosting. And then of course I have to add a cherry and oh no, guess what? I don't have red. Guess I'll be right back. Okay, had to go grab another set and I now have red. So I'm going to continue with my theme of light on top and dark on bottom. And so what I need to do is create kind of a white little highlight on my cherry. And then remember you can always come in with your black and just give things a little bit of an outline. Okay, I could color my plate. The cake is very similar to the pie, so I think that at this point you probably could um, head out on your own and color your own sweet treat. So remember, just to review really quickly, you start out with a basic shape, you turn it into a form or make it 3D, add any details that you think it might need, crusts, uh, frosting, what have you. Make sure that you put your sweet treat on a plate. You don't wanna eat it off the countertop. If you want to, you could put a counter or horizontal line where the counter meets like the back wall of your kitchen and you could decorate that as well. So you start off with basic shapes. Then remember you color, color from dark to light. Uh, think about the direction you're coloring, okay? So each shape maybe color in a different 
direction to distinguish the different forms. With my plate, I don't know if you noticed, but I was doing kind of curvy lines. I wasn't coloring straight up and down, no. I was doing curvy lines that follow the form. So, make sure you go from dark to light, color to follow the form, and think about basic shapes and then turn them into 3D objects, and you will have some awesome looking sweet treats. Remember, if you need references, check out Wayne Timo's work. You can just Google him, and his name is spelt a little weird, but I will have it right up in the upper corner of this video so that you can Google him. Friends, your teacher is mighty forgetful these days. I forgot to include how to draw a cake with a slice taken out of it in the video, but have no fear, you can pause this section of the video and follow these six simple steps to create your own cake with a slice missing. Have fun! Thank you for watching this Garden City Arts online program. Please help us thank our sponsors.